Bookman Radio Station, and tonight my guest is Colin. And what does Colin do? Well, he helps you make sure that you can vocalise your story we can, by putting a twist in the way stories are being told, by creating stories which are different, a terminal story for each story, series for each story, each character be its own voice actor, and not someone using an accent as well as a narrator. Each story can be either be related in recent episodes or stories at home. We different. We offer different offers with cost of production depending on your appetite to share rights to the audio series. Maybe the, the, they well on the thing it says the middle of February, but obviously February's gone. But obviously they're doing that now. To find you can find out the cost. But I'm talking to the person behind the 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 um, service today. It's Colin, and Colin's going to be telling me about be here bringing books to life. Vision without sight. So, Colin, tell me a little bit why you set it up and what it does. Okay, hi, Mark. Uh, nice to be talking to you. So, um, I think, you know, as a, I was an author myself and I, I wrote a book and um, <clears throat> then went into the world of publishing and got a, a deal with a sort of an indie publisher and uh, discovered how difficult that whole process was and then what happened was my daughter who's now sort of 35 she had a freak accident and lost her sight so um, she ended up being blind so she didn't get to read my book so I thought to myself well that's not very good. <laughs> she needs to read a dad's book. Um, so I created a audio version of my book um, for myself and for my daughter. Um, and yet again, the whole of the sort of audio book world seemed a bit bogged down in, in all kinds of red tape and what have you. And I found it quite difficult to do other than just sitting there and reading the book myself. So I got a number of my acting friends to come along and help me read the book. So they voiced one of the parts in the book, and we created a book that had, you know, lots of different voices in it. And uh, my daughter just loved it. Um, and of course, you know, she she's involved in helping other blind people and and that kind of thing. And, and they all loved the book as well. So I thought, well, obviously. You know, it's it's a good idea for us to make our books as inclusive as we can for people. So I then um, started to set up the company uh, because one of the things I found really difficult was getting the quality of audio right when you you know when you get your friends or, or relatives or whatever to give you a bit of a bit of a voice of one of the characters they send it to you on you know on the phone or anything like that and the quality wasn't that great um, so now I've built a, a full audio studio and we create the stories here um, so that we can have the very highest quality of audio we can get and we can get a number of people together in the room so that when they're reading the stories, they're interacting with each other, and it just helps to bring the whole thing to life. The other thing that, that made me do it this way is that for somebody who has a book of, you know, of sort of average length, if, we, if we're going to call it 100,000 words for a book, it can be very, very costly um, to get a voice actor to to do your book and um, my aim for the company is to be in a position where we actually uh, can get to the point where a bit like one of the large publishers um, in, in books is that we'll be saying to people right we would like to produce the audio series of your book and uh, we will pay you for it so rather than the other way around where people are paying us for us to produce their books I'd like to get to the position where we can say right now we can offer a, an advance on 
what we see as the sales, the possible sales of uh, any of the audio series. The other, so the, that's one interesting fact in that we are, you know, adding lots of different voices in there and we're giving it some intro music. Uh, uh, but we are also cutting people's books up into episodes so that, you know, one book might be 10 episodes long of uh, an hour each. So people could just buy one episode or, the, or four episodes or the whole 10 episodes. But it, but it allows them to dip in and out of a book in a, in a different way. Um, and it also means that when they're downloading these things, you know, they're not getting massive great big files on their whatever their audio device might be on the computer or their phone and that type of thing. And they can store them all online. Um, and then listen to, download them and listen to them as and when they want. So the, the thing that I kind of say is we, we've tried to create Netflix, but without the pictures. Yeah, that's the main thing I do on my, um, on my YouTube. I've got a lot, loads of audio um, videos. Because I like to yeah. do, as I said, I like to do lots of script writing. Because I find... Oh, yeah transcripts of TV series. I've been doing Doctor Who. I'm on the Patrick Fulton series at the moment. I'm on okay. Fear Fear of the Deep episode six I'm gonna do next. I love reading them. I, I don't bother doing the voices because I just think it would be you know because <laughs> it'd be a bit of an insult. <laughs> So, uh, so I just read it as a straightforward. If if you're listening to a book, but it, 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 I think it gives a good input for people who probably can't, like you say, can't actually or uh, have a visual problem because sometimes they can focus it in their mind anyway. And I also think, like you do, if you tell a good story, like I like doing horror stories, and I think horror is very good at getting that feeling inside you. That, that, oh, I wonder what he would look like. And that steps, all oh, that creepy, the, the, that creepiness and that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about audio in, in general is that, um, you know, there are all kinds of reasons why people who can't wear books. It's just because my daughter was blind, it got me thinking about it before that. I don't think I'd even specifically um, thought about it. But it, but it also lends itself to, it's a bit like music, isn't it? You, you just take it with you wherever you go. So, you know, if you're a person that likes to go to the gym, you can take your book with you if you want and listen to it while you're doing your walking or you're running or whatever. Or if you're commuting, you know, you can sit and listen to your book at, at, at that point as well. So it, it gives people far more opportunities to, to consume these things than than they can by just sort of sitting down and reading them. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant idea. I, I, you know, I think that it's a good way if you wanted to say, like, I could do like an audio version of my own book and put it in episodes. Like, I, I could pick a book at random just to try it out, and then like, I think, oh, that would make at least five episodes and see how that goes. And then, and it could over do it, like, send it to you and get it done for you, or you could do it yourself, and obviously, if there's, depending on the sound quality, um, it, you could put it on, you know, depending, like you say, it's got to be good sound quality, that's the problem, as you say, when you do it on devices, on the, on the, through your phone and things like that, obviously you're going to lose a little bit, because you haven't got the professional studio bits. Yeah, and I think, you know, especially if you're sort of appealing to people who just can't see anything themselves, you know, it's, it's great if you can get the right quality of sound for them. I mean, we're not, um, so we're not going to be putting creaking doors and, and, and wind and that type of stuff in the stories. So it's not a, it's not a archers, if you remember the archers. On the yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if you're old enough for that, but I certainly do. 
Um, so, you know, you're not going to hear people um, closing doors, picking up cutlery and all of that type of stuff. So there won't be any sound effects in the back of the, in, in the, in the, back of the story. It will literally just be the people, you know, reading um, the story. Because uh, I just didn't want to detract away from, from the story itself, really. And when I first listened to one that we'd done, even though I'd done it, I was really, really surprised when a different voice came in. So I was listening to the audio of it, and I was thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying this. And then suddenly you get, it gets a switch to a different voice, and you, you get really taken by surprise, and it kind of just drags you in that little bit more, and then you get to know the voice as the, as the story goes along, and then you associate that voice with the character in the story, and it just helps to build, build the story nicely. And so that was a, a pleasant surprise for me, you know, that, that I was surprised, even though we'd done the thing ourselves. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was quite good. So if anybody's got, say, say I wanted to, I'll use myself as Zombo. Say I said to you, oh, uh, Colin, I'd like you to um, send you one of my stories. I would like it to be serialised. And I send you like a little script or my actual stories. And you look at them. And obviously, if you like them enough, <laughs> um, how would you go about doing it so people would understand what, what the process would be? Okay, so we, there are two, two or three things we've done really. We, we've created some portals on the web. So if anybody wants to submit their book to us, there's a place that they can go, and that asks them for all of the information that we need in terms of what the book is. So, uh, how long is it? How many characters in it? What are the characters' names? Um, you know, how do you see the characters? What sort of voice do you think the characters have? So, there's a there's a portal that people can fill out all of the information, and then from that we can sort of say, well cost for us producing that is X, and then if they want to sort of go ahead, we use that portal to move that process through, and we upload all of the audio files onto that particular portal, uh, and yeah. then that feeds into an app that we've had specifically developed, which is a bit like uh, Kindle. So it's, like, it's a bit like the Kindle app, really, but it's for audio. So you can go on and you can see all of the episodes and all of the books that all of the authors have um, for sale, and you can purchase either an episode or the whole entire series, and then that goes into your library in, in the app, and then you can listen to them as and when you want yeah, I like the premises like that because I've seen it now. I've seen the um, brief introduction: who you are, name of your book, number of words in your book, the yeah. gen, gene. Well, sometimes it, I like to. When I use when I like to write horror, I do like to put a bit of comedy in it to yeah. break it down a bit, just because I don't. I like I like that kind of humour, and I, I can see. I like the bit where you say love lines. I like the one I like the best is. Um, the, the space one in space no one can hear you scream that's it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, so that's it so I mean the, the log line comes from um, yeah it comes from films really it's not really a book uh, thing but you know that they have a, a method when they're doing a film where they say well you have to give us a log line and a log line is the description of your book in, in a very short you know, maybe 40 words or something like that. And things like Jaws and, and, yeah, and in space no one can hear you scream. You know, that is the kind of thing that people can look at and think, ooh, well, I wonder what that's about. So rather than have to read the whole of the blurb, you know, they can just look at that and think, yeah, that sounds like something I might be interested in. Yeah, yeah I, I like the premises, the idea. I mean... I like the idea of serialisation because I used to go, I'm showing my age here, 
going to the fifth to the cinema for fifty p and watching people ah. like Fresh Golden and the yeah. Children Foundation films. Yeah, yeah. And it was all serialized, so you had to go back next week to watch it. But when you think yeah. about it, we watch serialized programs now, like soaps. Soaps are serialized. Of, of um, Netflix and or Disney Plus or all of those things is that you know they do do films, of course they do, but actually most of most of the product that, that the people consume through those are these sort of long series, a bit like I know Friends or Grey's Anatomy and those types of things that people will just watch one a night, you know, a forty-five minute sort of episode, but they can watch the next one when they want to watch it. They don't have to wait another, you know, week or four weeks for the next episode to come out. They have control of, well, I'd like to listen to three tonight, or I'd like to watch three tonight, or, you know, I want to watch, I want to watch the whole of the Doctor Who series over the next week, and they can just sit down and consume it. So, yeah, but, but being able to, to watch it in snippets as and when you want, is the thing that we, you know, we are doing with the audio really. It, 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 you can consume it as and when you want it um, and you require it. Yeah, I definitely might do. I might send one. I might send a shorter one, so then I know what the what I've done wrong, what I need to do right. Because I, I think it's nice to sort of like get like a little bit of feedback. Because sometimes what you think you may have done right. So we can say, well, you, can you just reword this a little bit because it's a bit jumbled and we don't know quite what you're trying to say. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind that because I think it's important to get feedback. Yeah. Yeah, I think people, people need feedback in, in all kinds of things. Yeah, I'll definitely do that because I'll, I'll go by the what you've done. I'll do it the way you've d- told, said to put it here. And obviously I'll have to... Um, to write as the word document bit is easy enough it's just putting it instead of uh putting it in pdf just putting it in word yeah i mean if you're you know if you're if if you're interested in, in it i will send you the link to the portal and then you can fill all your information in yeah i'm definitely interested because i i've already got loads of my books on pdf anyway so it's not not going to be that hard to convert them to um, uh, uh, Word, and if I need a, yeah. a if I need a image for my book, I can either draw it myself because I'm I like to do cartoons, or I can find a public domain image that nobody's it doesn't matter about the uh, copyright to, and then just use that. No, 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 no. Book, a book. If you read them, um, I've read. I read the original version of Bambi. The um, the whole book, the original book, and what the Disney version is is like. 
that's one page of the book virtually that's all they use one page of the book all the rest they've just forgotten about <laughs> So it's a, it's so it's quite a it's quite a sort of inclusive process between the author and us as well because you know we want to get we want to we want to know how you feel about it and how you think it should be portrayed and where you think it best breaks so that people can stop at that point or or if it's a cliffhanger or whatever it might be um, and then you know so we work quite closely together on the production of the of the audio series in any case you know you. It's not just the case that you give us you give us the book and we go away and hide for a few. Well, minutes. that's the problem. That's the what a lot of. I'm not being horrible to most book publishers, but you send them your story, and then at ten times they go, "Great, yeah, lovely," and then they'll go, "Oh, could you change this bit? Could you change that bit?" Well, we don't quite understand that character. Could you change it? If you can, well, not really, because that's the main <laughs> part of the story. <laughs> And that's the way I wrote it, and that's the way I want it. So there you go. Yeah, and, 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 and it's like everybody in the world loves to, in an idea where they would love their book to be a film, but by doing this, you've, you've got it in a great audio way that it's a, if someone wants to know your book, you can say, oh, look this app up and listen to it while you're in the car, while you're going to work, yeah. or... But in your kid's room, if it's a kid's story, and they can listen to it, and they can say, oh, I like that. And, and you know, it, it's the whole thing is kind of, I mean, one of, the things that, that, one of the things that's really, really hard for authors in general is sort of the marketing of their books and selling books. You know, it's, it, it's a massive, time-consuming and quite costly. Quite a costly uh, effort, and so the audio, the way we're doing this, is that so in, on the app that people are going to consume the audio series in, you know, it'll have all of the links of the books on there. And quite often, once people start to hear it, they think actually I might quite to buy buy the book and almost read along with it if I can get the chance, you know. But it's a one thing. Um, leads to the other, but it also means that for a for a person that is selling like their ebook for two ninety nine or whatever it might be, um, there's a lot of work has gone for something for somebody to sell it for less than the price of a cup of coffee. And yeah, I agree. Though. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it I. Seems so yeah. cutting your book up into a series actually will probably quadruple the amount of um, the royalties you can get in in terms of you know it's five two ninety nine instead of one two ninety nine and they might buy your book so and it, and it just builds the profile and lets people know that you're there and and it helps with the whole marketing effort really. Well, yeah, I agree. I mean, as, as I, I ambitiously wrote my own autobiography because I have um, cognitive memory problems. So I thought right. I'll, I'll write it while I could remember bits and pieces. I found by doing it in like a semi diary form, I found it very, I found it very cathartic writing about things. Like I thought, oh, I wonder if people would like to put that, like I put in about my near death experience about my mental health problems. I've been quite an honest book, you know, I don't, because I'm writing it so I can put whatever I want in it. But there's certain things I left out because I thought oh, I might be a bit too much or a bit too near the knuckle. So you've got to be careful what you put. Because obviously, libel stuff as well. I mean, I wouldn't say nothing nasty about anyone else because I'd, I'd just say A said B said, yeah. You know, you got to be kept, but if it's about myself, I can say what I like about myself. <laughs> I imagine you get a good feedback from the authors as well, because obviously they, they got a new way of, of giving a book out. Because I think a lot of people wouldn't think of doing it this way. 
because it, they would think, oh, well, it's not a very, people aren't going to go and actually read my book. And they think, well, actually they will, though. It's like you say, because if they're going to listen to it, they might think, oh, I like that bit of work. I wonder what else they've done. And they might check your Amazon account. And they might say, yeah, oh, you've done that book. I'll read that. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's definitely, it definitely helps with, you know, the sales of the books themselves as well, because all of that information is, is on the, on the app. So, you know, the, you know, people will just go and um, have a look. So, yeah. is, is the app yeah. run, up and running it now then? No, the app will be up and running um, probably at the end of the, First week of um, May. I mean, it's it, it's 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 finished. Um, but until I've got enough episodes on there, because we're yeah, yeah, you gotta running. you gotta justify. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah know. I mean, we're not charging. We're not charging for the app, but I just want enough content on there for people to be able to consume, as it were. And so yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want just ten stories. You like like. In an idea where you'd like 500 stories. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we would like that many. I, don't, I doubt that we'll, we'll, we'll wait quite that long, but yeah, that would be perfect. Um, uh, yeah, so it's just a, a few weeks away yet. Yeah. Unfortunately, the process of turning a book into, into a sort of a, a dramatised audio series is much longer than people think. You can't just sort of whip one out in two days, unfortunately. <laughs> no, no, I, I do know what you mean. I mean, I, because I can do my own stuff, it it, it it doesn't take me so long because I can read it, make sure it comes across right and just release it. <laughs> it's as simple as that for me, but I'm not too worried about, because all my stuff I've ever done is via a smartphone and an Amazon Fire tablet. I haven't got anything more complicated than that. But that's my style. I keep it simple because that's just me. Yes. I, if I was and doing it for fine. money, it'd be different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the, the, you know, it's the logistics of the thing that can also take quite a lot of time. I mean, if you've got, you know, if you've got a scene, a chapter in a book, if you can imagine where there, where there may be four or five characters in that particular chapter and you've got I don't know, a crowd of people as well. Um, you know, so there's a crowd of people that are talking. There are four or five characters in that particular chapter. You know, the, the logistics of manoeuvring all of those people into the into the studio at the same time so that you get the right the right sound and the right quality is is, is not is not straightforward. So it just does take a bit of time to organise really. Yeah, as I say, I'm, I would, um, I'm gonna, as I say, I'm gonna obviously share this on my podcast and my blog, and I'll put it on my, which goes on YouTube anyway, and, um, hopefully people will listen in, and hopefully they'll get, get to you. Um, how can they contact you, Colin? So, the, the best bet is just to, Drop me an email at colin at behere.co.uk and I can uh, get in touch with them from there. Or they can go to the website, which is just behere.co.uk and there are, you know, contact details on there as well. And obviously, uh, if you send something in, don't expect a reply like that instant, <laughs> but you will reply. No, I, I mean I know how busy people are, and um, how is your is your daughter ever thought about writing about what happened to her or doing a book about what happened to her? Yeah, we've thought about that. I think we might we might do something about that a bit later. Uh, yeah, I think you know as you rightly say, sometimes these things can be a cathartic exercise, but. Uh, She's got quite a lot on, you know, man managing all of that. So when we when we feel ready, I think we may do something like 
I think it make a fascinating story. And it just shows you the ability of the human mind to overcome something that can take, if you're not careful, can make you give up on life. You know what I mean? I don't mean it in a nasty way, but you know. No, no. No, these things can destroy people. Luckily, you know, Amy isn't like that. She's the complete opposite of that. So, yeah, we've been very lucky. Yeah, I think there's a message we have to come tell people that, you know, don't, just because someone says, oh, I don't think you're capable, give it a go. Yeah. If it does, you've given it a go. Does it matter if you get five people who like your podcast or two people like your book or it, it's someone who likes what you've done? Yeah. We all can't yeah. be famous. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be too famous these days. I mean, you might have people coming after you about having having a drink of wine in a, in a party or something. <laughs> well, Colin, is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? No, I think, you know, I think um, we'd be very interested to, you know, to, to take a look at anybody's stories that they've got. And, you know, as I said, no hard and fast rules to this. We're happy to chat to you and talk, talk to you about what it is you might want to do and what it is we do. So, you know, just just feel free and very approachable and just, yeah, drop us an email and we'll get back to you and, uh, and we can start talking. Well, thank you, Colin. I found this in, uh, conversation very fascinating and I will have a good think about which book I would choose to sort of see how it would work out. And how it gave me a good idea how to, which way I would want it read, and then I'll take it from there. If I do it, we do it. If we don't, we don't. That's life. Lovely. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity. It's been great talking to you. Thank you, Colin, for giving me your time of day. Thank you, my friend, and have a lovely day. <laughs>